Hello and welcome, Talking Really, and me, Andy Wright. We're going to have a little chat about the creeping NHS privatisation. Now, when we say creeping, we actually mean that in the literal sense of the word, because this has been going on for quite a number of years, even though it feels like it's only recently happening. It's actually been going on for at least seven years so since the uh, the new laws came in so the health and social care act in 2012 was the initial catalyst for this particular route that the government the tory government are going down they're actually trying to bring in um slowly but surely the idea of private health care so doing away with the nhs and obviously trying to get private uh, firms, private companies to run it. And uh, the private companies will obviously be out for profit. So it's obviously the idea of the NHS was originally to do, to give everybody um, at the point of service free of charge healthcare. Uh, and clearly if you have a system of uh, private healthcare, then there has to be profit involved and that will involve money. So this particular route has been going on for seven years now. But the article, the article that um, interested me was this one, which was in 2017, like two years ago. And uh, Jerome Hunt was uh, involved with the privatisation route. And... Uh, he obviously claimed uh, £44,000 for a private bar for him, whilst he was calling for £22 billion NHS cuts in funding. But of course, the creeping privatisation of healthcare is damaging the NHS. This article from 2016, as you can see, details the uh, reasoning behind the privatisation under the guise of patient choice could be uh, seen as damaging for the NHS, leading to worse treatment for old, the poor and the sick. The government's sudden shift in the, to the widespread use of private healthcare firms was a radical experiment. The problem is when you have a private healthcare system, the obviously the private firms were cherry-picking um, the easiest cases to treat partly because they're cheaper to do, but also they're more profitable, um, and also because private clinics do not have the intensive care facilities of a large NHS hospital if then things go wrong, as is the case with my sister, who had some uh, surgery done in a private healthcare hospital funded by the NHS. However, she had complications, and uh, they didn't have any way of treating her in the uh, private healthcare hospital so she was moved to a nhs hospital uh, and obviously they tried to discharge you asap because they're not getting paid for it according to the founding principles of, of the nhs it is supposed to meet the needs of everyone regardless of their circumstances An increased use of private sector provision by nhs boards was associated with a significant decrease in direct NHS provision and with widening inequalities by age and social economic deprivation. So this uh, thing was, um, this article was 2016. So obviously moving a little bit closer to the uh, time frame. And then just before that in 2014, there's an article here, uh, which was NHS facing creeping privatization under the Health and Social Care Act, which uh, which was 2012. Uh, so 2014, a study in the BMJ, the British Medical Journal, revealed that between April 2013 and August 2014, non-NHS provi providers, those from private and voluntary sectors, have secured 45% of contracts. Um, this article does remind me of the way that the uh, Tories did the train service and railways uh, back in the day. 
um, and look at what look at what a mess that is at the moment. So with the railways being privatised and different companies running it, you see that the train system is a mess, and uh, Labour would be interested in bringing it all back into nationalisation to make it run better because it did run well but it was just not making as much money as as required so this is exactly what's going to happen with the nhs that private companies are going to take over and uh, it's all going to be based on profit are we actually going to be going into a system of of healthcare similar to america where each person has to have insurance because if you haven't got insurance you won't get treated uh, otherwise you pay for it yourself at your own pocket which obviously then means that the low low income uh, people will not be able to afford treatment and obviously will not be able to get treated and possibly their illnesses will make them uh, suffer more or even they'll, they'll probably die from it so you know healthcare in the UK has always been free so they're putting they're putting a lot of um, emphasis on the CCG to make sure that the uh, the playing field is level between NHS and private contractors. Uh, so the whilst the CCGs are independent, with a, a clear focus to improve services, but they are looking at things which are different from traditional NHS hospital-based models. To ensure that they get the best outcomes for the patients and local populations however again it's all down to money as with the tory party it's always about money so there we go that's basically something along the lines of the um the discussion points today uh creeping nhs privacy it's been going on for a little while now so with the tory government in shambles and uh, possibly there being some sort of um, election coming up very soon hopefully the uh the change of government will see that this will be uh, abandoned and um hopefully reversed if it is put into place because you know the whole uh nhs is is worthy of saving it just needs some funding put into it and uh maybe a little bit of reorganization to make it run better but it's the main thing is is having the the investment in it, and if you withhold investment from it, something whatever it is, then it's going to die. And this is what they're doing: they're withholding money, uh, especially with the uh, the uh, report there of General Jeremy Hunt demanding that they cut 22 billion off the bill. You know, it's a lot of money to lose out of the system uh, that could be used to uh, make it run better. Anyway, give us a, a thumbs up, like and a share, and uh, do come back again very soon for another video, very, very soon, I've said that twice. So thanks for watching, I'll catch you again very soon, bye for now.